Hello, rando nuts. Right now I am walking along the hedge maze, which is actually kind of a newer addition to the Stanley Hotel. I think they added it because it's, you know, such a theme of Stephen King's The Shining. And, um, and so of course, let's just, let's just add a hedge maze to the real Stanley and, you know, people have fun with it. But before we get into some exploring of the Stanley Hotel and our official rando nodding, let's go back to my car and I can just show you some pictures and maybe just tell you a little bit more about the Stanley Hotel. So for those of you who don't know, or maybe you just need a reminder, the Stanley Hotel is most famous because it is Stephen King's inspiration for The Shining. As the story goes, Stephen King apparently stayed here at the Stanley in like the 70s, I think. And that was at the time period when the hotel was only open for the season, which is like the summer season. And then it would close in late October um, before winter because the roads back then were still not good enough to get enough traffic to, to justify leaving the hotel open during the winter. So Mr. Stephen King came up on the very last night that the hotel was open before closing for the winter. And he claims he was like the only only guest staying in the hotel and it inspired him to write The Shining. So for that reason, that's why the Stanley Hotel has become so popularized in many ways. I feel like the Stanley Hotel is one of those places in America that you can like say it and a lot of people know it, whereas a lot of other hotels and mountain towns that are old and haunted, like you don't know them quite as well as you might know the Stanley Hotel and it's because Stephen King kind of made it famous. But even without Stephen King writing his amazing book, The Shining, on this hotel, it is still, like, in its own right, just like a creepy, old, haunted hotel. And I freaking love this hotel. I have been coming here forever because luckily I, you know, I'm from Boulder. For those who know me, I'm from Boulder, and so I live fairly close. And, yeah, forever I have been coming up to Estes Park. I've taken the ghost tour, like, a million times. I have stayed here a few times. I, I just love it. It feels like, it feels weirdly like my safe place, even though it's, like, an old haunted hotel. But I just love it so much. There is amazing history here. There are just amazing things that have happened here just throughout the years. And then on top of that, there's of course lots of interesting paranormal activity and ghost stories that are fun to tell. So now that I've given you a little bit of a reminder of what this hotel is all about, I think we should try to sneak on in there and get some footage before we officially start our Randonautica adventure. And I say sneak because technically, Technically, tourists who are not staying at the hotel are allowed into the lobby, and that's pretty normal. But I am really hoping that we can sneak upstairs. So, so we'll see if that happens. We'll just, we'll see. So right now we're at the side of the main building of the Stanley Hotel. And I just wanted to give you kind of a panorama view of it because we're actually parked right in front of the manor house, which I would argue is actually more haunted than the like original building and i shouldn't say that as if the manor house is not original as well because it also it was built about the same time as the main building but just look at this beauty one of the most beautiful buildings in america i think you can see the fourth floor windows up there. That's where I really would like to take you guys. The fourth floor is my favorite floor. really busy in here today. So, um, but here's FO Stanley. There he is. <laughs> um, so we're gonna go back outside and um, look at some other stuff. <laughs> that was really funny. I had kind of gone into the corner to like film that little piece for you, but some dude was like all of a sudden like it's coming right up to me. I don't know what his um, whole thing was, which is so that's why that little little bit was a little awkward because I was trying to navigate social interactions, which are hard in 2020. Social interactions were already hard, but now they're harder. But I'm glad I was able to give you a glimpse of the um, lobby 
and hopefully we'll be able to go back in there. I think there just happened to be like a tour that was either starting or going through there. And there were like all these social distancing points on the floor of like where you're supposed to stand and like no one was doing that. And I just like had to get out of there because I was like, oh my God, I'm trying to film and I'm a weirdo and I need to leave. So, um, so yeah, so let's, let's not be suspicious and sneak in, <laughs> sneak into the hotel the back way. Don't be suspicious. 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 my little rule follower heart is beating quickly um, because so there was one scene I showed you I'm gonna edit it into the right here where I, I was coming down the hallway on the second floor and I came up on like those glass doors that were in the middle of the hallway and that's new like I realized they must have installed those to try to in another like security measure to try to keep people out from going up into the rooms because that's really common that people try to do exactly what I just did but um anyway but I'm a smart little cookie and I knew to go through the back that's an interesting light okay so so we're gonna go back to the car now and we will start our official rando knot but first here's a close-up of some manor house action Ugh. So I really, I really wanted to hang out in there longer and be able to like kind of explain things to you as like I kind of walked around and showed you stuff. But there were so many house cleaners, of course, doing their job like they should be, and they were like in every, like everywhere I went, there was like another house cleaner, and like the doors of the rooms were open, and they, it was like very clear that like I couldn't really stop and talk. But what I am learning is that if you just confidently walk in anywhere, you usually aren't 
questioned, which is kind of awesome. So I just kept, sorry, there's people getting in their car like right next to me. So I just kept confidently walking around and no one like talked to me or like, like I don't know, just it was fine, I guess. Oh my gosh, it is getting very hot in here. It's supposed to be like fall. It's supposed to be cool, but it's like really hot still. It's supposed to get cooler in Colorado next week, but this week it's still like in the 70s and I am wearing this, which is not very cool. But now we've had our impromptu little discovery of the Stanley Hotel and I got to show you some of it. Now let's do our randonautica and see where it leads us. So as we all know by this point, the original Randonautica app is still not working. At least it's not working for iPhone users. I know that at this point, um, Android users, some people are able to use it. And I've already heard some mixed reviews about the new Randonautica app. So I'm very curious um, how that's gonna go. So we're still gonna be using the knockoff version that I have on my phone called the Randonaut Location Generator. So I'm gonna pull that app up. This is what it shows me. Sometimes it's really weird in terms of like thinking it knows where I am and it actually like doesn't really have my location that sec. Apparently I'm in two locations right now. Like the red pin is supposed to be, you know, where I am. So I'm going to hit Randonaut. Let's do an attractor. Let's do, um, I think in terms of how far I want to go, I kind of want to stay fairly close to the Stanley because my intention today is going to be aligned with the Stanley. So let's just do like a thousand meters. Do the temporal RNG, whatever that means. Just one point. Okay, it is time to put in my intention. And I guess I haven't even told you what my intention yet is. My intention is to be led and I feel like I have this intention a lot. By the way, I wanna say thank you so much for all the intentions that you gave me in my last video. You gave me some amazing suggestions and I really wanna start using them, but because I'm doing kind of a historical Randonautica today, I'm just gonna keep in line of being led to a place that is going to reveal to me something more about the history of the Stanley Hotel. So, okay, to be more specific, because I also would like this to be creepy. I want this to, this is like, this is like my Halloween episode. Okay, so we need to be creeped. So my intention is to be led to some location that has some creepy, unknown, or lesser known historical association with the Stanley Hotel. Does that make sense? I think it makes sense. So we're gonna start. A creepy location about the history of the Stanley Hotel. Creepy location about the history of the Stanley Hotel. We've got our ad, so we're ready to see our location. Okay, so this is what it's showing me in terms of where it's pulled up for me. I really have no idea where that is. It looks like it's kind of like a big building right on the side of the road. So this is where, obviously, where I am. I'm over here at the Stanley Hotel, and this point is over here in kind of, this is like a neighborhood. Like I don't know a ton about Estes Park, but I do know that that's obviously a neighborhood. And another thing I do know is that when this hotel was originally built, obviously those houses weren't there. And a lot of this land was actually owned by F.O. Stanley. He's the guy obviously that built this hotel back in the early 1900s and 1909 is you know, the date on the hotel. And, um, and when he came here, like he owned half the town and then like this other Scottish guy owned the other half of the town. Um, Oh, and what's so funny is this is on, you can't really see it, but it's on McGregor Avenue, and McGregor was the other guy who owned most of um, Estes Park. And those two, F.O. and McGregor, I do not think got along very well. So I'm wondering if maybe this land has something to do with the hotel, or maybe it was something that McGregor owned since the street is named after him. I'm not sure, and I'm not really sure what we're gonna, like, if, because it looks like it's kind of being led to a specific house. So I'm not sure what we're gonna see when we get over there. But let's start driving and see what happens. So as we're driving, I'm just gonna give you a little bit of story time. So one of the reasons I really wanted you guys to see the fourth floor and why I like it so much is because it was originally built as where the nannies stayed. So obviously the hotel was originally built to be like kind of a retreat for, um, for you know wealthy families in America and often these families had nannies with them because of course the adults could not be bothered with their own children during the day. They were like, okay, go be with your nanny, be not seen nor heard and go just hang out with her. So um, 
So the kids often would hang out on the fourth floor. So one of the common ghost stories that people talk about is that it's on the fourth floor that you'll often hear children playing and laughing and balls bouncing, um, like that kind of thing. Um, and then also because it was the nannies who were staying up there, they were usually like young, single, and also like poor women. Like if you were a nanny back in the early 1900s, it was because, you know, you were single, young, and you know, poor, I don't know. So, so they attracted a lot of lusty attention sometimes. And um, so sometimes that was consensual, but I also think a lot of it was not consensual. So there's just some kind of like dark energy up there as well. Like of just of men, you know, kind of sneaking up to the fourth floor in the middle of the night, maybe taking advantage of the nannies. And then the kids obviously being very attached to their, to their, to their nannies, maybe more so than their parents, they, they obviously stayed up there a lot too. Another thing you might have noticed about the fourth floor, and maybe I'll insert some of that footage again into this part, but um, is that the it's way narrower up there. Like the rooms are smaller, the hallways are narrower. The the second and third floor they're kind of more grand and open. There's those mirrors, and it's more it's more opulent. Whereas the fourth floor was kept very simple because it was meant for the servants and the nannies. Now all those rooms are just regular rooms. Like the rate to stay on the fourth floor is you know the same as the as the second and third floor, but um. But to stay in the particularly haunted rooms, because there's a few rooms that are like historically like the most haunted, um, those rooms are booked out like months in advance and I think they are more expensive. So I'm turning onto a street where there's the Canyon Inn Lodge or something like that lodging, I don't know. Oh my gosh, this is where my uncle got married. That is so crazy that it's taking me to a point that is, that's so, that's freaking me out, that's so crazy. He got married at that very little island in that pond, like in the early 90s. And I didn't, like I knew it was Nestus Park, but I had no idea it was over here. And so now we're at all of these like vacation condos and we are like at the point. Let me show you. Well, okay, we're almost there. Okay, I just parked. And for some reason, I think because the reception's kind of bad up here, um, my little blue dot keeps like jumping around a lot, but we're basically, I just parked, like we're pretty close to the red point. But you guys, I can't even tell you like how freaked out I am that of all the points it could lead me to in Estes Park, like it led me to the very spot that my uncle was married in the 90s because this is the uncle that I was just staying with out in Massachusetts. And we had even like talked about that wedding and like talked about, you know, that that memory of that place. And then, and I totally forgot where it was. And the fact that this point is like, I can like look down to it basically. Like this point is like at that spot where the wedding was. It just kind of comes back to what I've said in videos so often where it's like the Random Nautica app can be very personal to you. So me making my intention can be um, like, I might get results that are very personal to me that if someone else was having that same intention, they might be led just in a different direction. So I feel a little bit weird because it took me to, yeah, I'm in these like vacation rentals. There's like condos, there's like some people like out on their like vacation porch, like doing whatever they're doing. And I don't see any like clear associations between here and like the history of the Stanley Hotel, except for the fact that we are still very close to it. And I'm sure that this land itself like has something to do with the land surrounding the Stanley. So I'm getting it out and we'll just walk around for a little bit. I might walk down to the the wedding spot and um and we'll just see if we find anything okay i just walked up a ways and we're pretty much like right at the point and this is like it this big old like rock formation i don't know if you can really see that through the trees but the more i look at it the more i think it's kind of crazy because it has this really old rock wall around it which is also something i've pointed out that i loved about new england and massachusetts but it's not a very common thing for us in colorado to have like old rock walls like this and it goes right around this like really big rock formation oh my gosh this is creepy do you see this this is so crazy there's like a really old sorry i'm out of breath it's kind of steep but look at this old like building or something like whoa what is this I mean I don't think this building is as old as like the Stanley Hotel but clearly there was something here something being built here or maybe 
something was here and then it got torn down and they put this new weird cement in it um, and it's right like the spot basically is this giant rock formation and this weird structure is like right next to it so let's go on the other side and see if there's anything in there it's like an old twisted pipe like you can tell by these rocks that, they're, that this is like the original foundation for something else that was here a long time ago and then they poured this newer foundation, I don't, or not foundation, but like cement thing much later, but like something was definitely here. This is so weird. I am like a little shook, like I was not expecting to be led to some place. Look at this. Like, do you see this like wood? Like this looks like old wood from like a building that might have used to, yeah, there's like all kinds of it. Like, do you see this? So there's definitely, this definitely used to be, it looks almost like a church or something. Okay, I'm gonna show you this. I don't know how else to get up there, so we're just gonna come through here, not be murdered. Look at this, there's like trash up here. I'm just really curious, like what was, this building. I really hope there's no mountain lions like living up here. I really don't need that in my life right now. But it could be. Okay, okay. What in the name? I'm a little freaked out now. Genevieve's officially freaked. What is this? Like, what? It looks like the roof caved in or something. I mean this, like this rock that's like the point is actually quite beautiful. It almost looks like with this little clearing here that there could be like, I mean I could see like ceremonies or this could have been like a sacred Native American site, like that's very likely. But then there's like this weird structure here, like I don't, and there's no door to it either. Like there's, obviously there was a roof and there's like this cement part, but there's like no obvious door and there's like this weird boulder in the tree. What is this? And we've got random trash and debris, as if people had been like burning stuff. I, I seriously, I had no idea. I don't. I mean, I, st I still have no idea what the heck is going on here. Like, I don't know why I've been led here. This is so random. What is that? Okay, that is exactly where a mountain lion would live. So we're just gonna go. And if these like houses and like obviously the hill and trees and stuff weren't here, you could probably see the Stanley Hotel from here. It's kind of over that hill, just kind of down the valley over this house. But seriously, what the actual F is with this structure? I'm just so curious, like what, what is this? There's something tied on this tree. Okay, and this rock is really cool. It definitely feels like some sort of like sacred rock place you guys i was so <laughs> i was so not expecting this like i don't know what i was expecting i honestly was worried this might be a little boring like i might be led to some place that there's like nothing whoa there's like nothing to show but the fact that this like old very old structure that's like kind of collapsed but also you could tell people have like been here messing with it like this is where it led me in terms of like weird creepy history that's like probably lesser known involved with the Stanley Hotel like I could totally see it like especially with like land dispute stuff and like who knows like church stuff like I don't even know because this is what it kind of feels like it's like maybe this was like an old church originally I'm not I'm really not sure but I'm officially creeped out like very creeped out and I was not expecting when I first saw all these like vacation rentals that are like new and fancy I was like okay I don't what this has to do with anything but then seeing this and this is like right like right at the point i am like all right well goodbye creepy structure i don't really know what to um what to make of you but yeah creeped out that's that's for sure okay let's just go back to the car I, I don't even I don't even need to go down and see the pond where my uncle got married um, which is just still like a weird coincidence that that's this whatever this is is also right next to where my uncle got married and it's like the weird interconnectedness it's like when you talk about breaking the matrix like these are the kinds of things 
that come up, like something, some memory that seems seemingly totally separate and innocuous somehow is tied to some other moment in history. And even though it would seem that those have no connection and no relevance, there they somehow there there is like that's it's just that's breaking the matrix right there i feel like goodbye creepy wall and rock you were kind of interesting such gorgeous mountain views in estes park though like just crazy gorgeous okay wow got a lot more than i bargained for with that one so let's do another one so this app, it lets you do two points and then it's gonna force you to try to get a, um, get a subscription and pay and obviously I'm not doing that right now. So we'll do just one other point with a new intention and then, um, and then I guess we'll just move on with our lives. Okay, but here's the problem is wherever I am right now, the reception is so bad that it won't like update. So I'm gonna drive a little farther into town and hopefully get better reception and then I will see you there. Okay, I actually decided to come back to the Stanley Hotel. In driving back to the hotel from that point, I just have realized like just how close the point was because as I was driving, I got really distracted telling you guys the story about the nannies and stuff that I went way too far. So coming back, I realized, oh my God, this really is like that point was really like just over the hill from the Stanley. It really is close. So it just, it, it, to me, it seems like whatever that land over there was like it definitely seems like it probably is close enough that it had an attachment to something going on with the stanley hotel so it's time for round two so we're back at the stanley we've got the app up it still thinks i'm in two places at once i don't i don't know what's up with that but um but for my next intention i would like to be led to fo stanley's fortune so I want to be led to something in this area that is like a representation of his prosperity, of his fortune. Yeah. So we're going to hit rando knot as we usually do. We're looking for an attractor. Still a thousand meters because I want to stay fairly close to the Stanley Hotel. Temporal, one point. Okay, I'm going to set my intention now. F.O. Stanley's fortune. F.O. Stanley's fortune. All right, we got our ad. So... <laughs> Let's close that. Oh my gosh, you guys. Okay, it's led us to a point that is super close. Like that pink thing right there, that's the Stanley Hotel. Like this is just right down, right down the hill from. So maybe he buried his fortune like right over there. But let's navigate and see truly how close it is. Okay. So it's kind of confusing, but I'm here. For some reason, it's having trouble keeping my location. I keep the blue dot keeps moving a lot, but it really is just like right down here. I could almost walk. I I think I should walk actually. I don't think I could park down there. So let's just get out and walk down there and just see what's down there. Okay, once again, we are not suspicious. We're just normal, normal people doing a randonautica. Oh my gosh, look how creepy this like open window is. I didn't even know those windows could open. So I don't know if you can really see this, but it looks like we have to go down there, kind of past this parking lot and like right down the hill down there, I think. Suddenly I'm really feeling like I should have brought a shovel. Maybe Echo like buried something over here. Cause really all this is is like dirt. Like I don't know what could be over here, but, uh, but we'll find out. This is kind of weird, it's like a little, exit from the hotel or something that's kind of weird. All right, well, we're just gonna go out this gate. This is kind of a new addition to the hotel. They've built this weird, like, chicken wire gate around the property. Um, but I think the point is gonna be, like, down this way. Okay, I don't know if you can see this, but I'm, like, a total idiot because the spot is actually more behind the hotel. I thought it was in front. There's the hotel. I'm in the weird area in front. It's actually up behind it. Can you tell that I'm a little bit directionally challenged? But those Google Maps are hard to read. Like, you can't tell what's north, south, east, west. Like, ugh. Okay, knowing what I know now about this spot, we are just gonna drive over there because it's like right on the road. Like, I might as well drive. So it's actually taking me up this little side road. I'm glad I was paying attention to the directions because I would not have thought to turn here. 
And again, there's like kind of more like luxury, you can't really see very well, but like luxury rentals back there. This whole area is now called like the Stanley property or something like they're just trying to capitalize on, you know, just kind of building more rentals since the hotel is easily booked out. Okay, wow, that was not a far drive at all. We are literally right behind the main building of the Stanley. And I basically parked like right, right in the spot, I think. Um, but you know what, this, I actually intuitively, I feel like I get why I would be led to this spot in terms of like what was like F.O.'s, F.O. Stanley's prosperity or his fortune or whatever, because this is a great vantage point. A great vantage point of the entire Estes Park Valley. And especially because the point is like a little bit behind the hotel and like the main property that FO had. Um, it's like it's like seeing the view from here. You can see it includes his property, but then it also includes like the entire view. And that was part of why FO wanted to build this hotel here is because he was just amazed by the beauty of this land. He was just kind of obsessed with this whole valley. And so for me to be led to the spot that has like a really a pretty good view, there's trees obviously, but like a pretty good view of like the whole vantage point of like this whole valley that makes sense that that's what fo would think of as his most like great fortune so that feels really touching it feels like i just shared a moment with fo stanley that prosperity and fortune is not so much about money itself but about the experience and the ability to even be here and to have such property i don't know it's just really cool I also kind of think it's funny that this point is like kind of right by where I just kind of broke into Stanley's hotel. So maybe F.O. Stanley was watching me from the grave. Knew that I was breaking the rules going into the, the upstairs part of the hotel. So thank you guys for coming on this journey with me in Estes Park and seeing the Stanley Hotel. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and as always, I will keep making them for you. We're gonna go to more places. There's a lot to see in Colorado and beyond. Like obviously I've made so many, so many videos in so many places and we're just gonna keep going. So if you enjoyed the video, please like the video and subscribe to my channel so that we can be friends and keep hanging out and you know, do stuff whatever whatever the stuff is that we do together so thank you guys so much and i will see you in my next video